What's up, what's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Don with the Don Front Show. Uh, I know I don't normally post a video or maybe a new schedule. I don't know if this will be a, a scheduled time. But there was something that was kind of alarming. So if you guys watch my channel, my sweet spot, I'm always in the four-hour chart. Like, uh, I, I've done day trades off the four-hour. Your, your trade should match your time frame. But I've done so much on the four-hour that I probably have a good idea what the other charts look like without actually having to look at them. I just kind of hang out there. It's been my sweet spot. In the choppy markets, it's also where things got a little rough. Like you had to just dive up or, or down. Like there was there was no no getting around that. Uh, but so Friday we got the melt up. It really left us in a 50-50 to where I didn't even swing. I have one Tesla bull spread. Uh, and I almost closed it because I thought I was gonna just buy some more things maybe, but nothing felt good. I didn't close that one, and it's one of those plays if you ever find yourself doing it just just close it right Cause it's not going to move the needle up or down right? if it's a max loss or win it's it's nothing i, mean, I wouldn't even check my account uh in that kind of normal does that, that make sense um yeah i'm basically risking 250 bucks so I, I don't like bringing up numbers on here but usually my account has to move thousands before i actually look at anything uh so I, I, to say that i only say it just for a disclaimer like i'm I'm ten, my, if I put if I said I put my money where my mouth is, technically I'm in a bullish position. Uh, but the Friday left us with that really 50-50 mark. So I was kind of jumping around to see what we can do. And I looked at the weekly chart. And right now, just the, the, the short and sweet to it, I'm going to break down the three charts. IWM, QQQ, SPY. But I feel like an excuse is coming and we're selling off. Like I don't care what the news or media says. Uh, the money looks like we're about to actually correct. So I'm going to walk through with you guys. This is my thought process. What makes this tricky and why bears lose a lot of money is the joke stocks only go up. It's that joke for a reason. And we just melt up all the time. Now, I went short this past week, if not a couple weeks, right? We made a killing going short. Um, but it was one of those, we bounced at a solid floor and IWM really showed it off. We go right here. Uh, we're on the weekly. Look at how, now, that kind of gives it away. Look at how sideways we are. Of course we found some buyers right there. So was that a nice little pullback? Yes. Could the selling get much worse? Absolutely. Did we change the trend? No, not not really. Like The daily trend, the physical candles technically did. We need a red one to pull back and make that higher low and then push up. That was our first sign we, we did. Still kind of in that channel now as far as like waves go. Uh, but when you pull back and just look at the weekly, that looks a little, a little toppy to me. Like I told you guys in my last video, that long wick, right? Wicks are a sign of rejection or a sign of what's to come. Uh, it's important to look at both sides of things. Uh, I've broken this down before on the channel. If we were to take, uh, you know what? Let's just we'll draw out another one real quick for the people that that are new. Two times speed. If it's uh, if you've seen this one before, um, let's get that out of here. So you hear people talking about the candle closed at its highs. Like who cares where the wick is? It's somewhere. We got we got a fat candle. Don't discriminate. Uh, we got another one right right there. Sure. Uh, whatever that is, it's probably just a directional candle, right? So we can close up up here now red or green if it's green it closed up here if it's red it closed down here but so just take this now when we're talking about this we're going to grab the absolute top bottom okay now we will have there's there's five sections to it we're gonna have the center we're gonna have the other zones and we pressure made this a little bit wider so we got right it gets confusing we put all these lines there let's scoot that down just a tad Okay, so now we're going to pretend that's a green candle. This candle closed at its this candle closed at at the highs. We're going to crank that brightness up. Okay, now you can measure every candle out this way. You hear people talk about close at the highs, close at the lows, because uh, regardless of where where its action is, I drew way too many. Uh, lines I can see we're just gonna reverse this once we get this done all right we're 
here, crank that up. Every candle looks like that. So grab the, uh, the weird thing on. Sorry, guys. Some of you guys are just used to people really recording themselves before. It's not me. I just clicked the record button. I don't need to rehearse or pretend. All right. So here is your your candle. There it is. Now, regardless of what that candle actually. Give me one more second, guys. Since you guys can't see that, let's just. There we go. All right. There's your candle. So. This is a, a green candle, right? So we opened up here, we closed here, closed at the highs, uh, a bullish trend. Bulls are in control. If that was a red candle, we closed down here. Bears are in control. If we were to do something like this, okay, still a red candle, that's still bullish, right? The bulls closed, right? We're slightly bullish. This is a neutral candle. You'll see little dojis pop out in there, but we closed up there if we were to take that same spectrum right here you know we'll chop it in half right there yeah we're in the, the bullish side so a lot some people think that might be a, a bullish sign and maybe again stocks they only go up everybody talks about it all the time this is the one time i kind of think that it might be a sign of what's to come or definitely a sign to take caution because uh, some tickers look okay now some tickers think that they might be oversold a lot of hype got brought in. The last video, I told you guys, the one thing all of these have in common is everything that got hyped up. If your ticker was involved in any kind of social media, hype and speculation poured in. I've made fun of investors because they talked about, uh, you know, uh, forward IPs and, and valuations. And and I usually make fun of it because usually we're, we're above or below and it's just them making excuses. But this time, they're actually on something. I think we are probably just a little bit too aggressive on this to where we're going to pull back. We're going to re... Uh, I heard this phrase that I don't think... I think it was on the Kramer show, something about repricing event. And, and that just clicked. I don't know who's talking about that out there, but that sounds perfect. Because we get an excuse that comes out, it's inflation, it's a cyber hack. Whatever excuse makes you sleep at night because you found it on the news, and it makes you feel sophisticated because there's got to be a reason. Uh, you being human, you have to have a reason why. We don't need a reason other than people are here to make money. Banks, institutions, they're here to make money. They will move it up and down. They're not biased to the long side. They're just biased to making money. They'll switch and go short just like we did. So that right there. Bull flag or reversal. They will look the same. If we're looking right here, we got the rally up. We got the base. It's going to rally base rally or rally base drop. So let's, let's pull up in the little retail indicators. Strength headed down. So that's already in a weekly downtrend, which, you know, in this case, probably better. Because that's already in the downtrend. If that completely cycles through, maybe retail's back on your side. We'll see strength go to the upside. So we'll see a couple more choppy weeks sideways. We'll see this RSI come down here. We'll see the big red that look like this down here. But really, all it did was go sideways. IWM is the one I got to say, if there's one I'm rooting for, it's IWM. Financials are rocking. Financials are the biggest piece in this. But if financials go short, it's cracking the IWM. It's bringing down the SPY. And everybody already right now hates tech. Let's jump into tech. Let's 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 clear things up though. Let's go to the IWM. Sideways. I don't know if there's anything we can break. If, we, if I'm charting this out on the weekly, if I'm looking for zones, where might someone be hiding? Where might some buy orders be hiding in here? I'm gonna check this area out. Now, I'm not even looking at candles. Like that's just what I don't care about price. I don't care about percentages. That would be a decent crash. We would probably need something pretty serious. But then we got this last little level right here. So if we were to chart that out, just looking for any kind of demand, it'd probably be in those two levels. Now, if you're looking at any other chart, if I told you this is an hourly chart, you'd say all day, give it a couple hours, and we'll be at that dip buy. This is the weekly, so that could be a couple months. Um, just to pull this off here, let, let's say eh, we'll grab from the highs, as everyone's going to talk about. If we pulled all the way down to here, that's a 27% correct, 28%. That is a full-blown crash. If we go up here, we just we're still in the crash territory because we're just past the correction. Take what I'm saying now with a grain of salt. Just you're clicking the buy button, you're clicking the sell button. I want to make sure you guys understand your positions. But if there's some red to come, maybe this isn't the time to be fighting things. 
QQQ, weekly chart. Everyone loves tech, tech's the future. But if I'm looking for any kind of demand, what stands out the most to me is this right here. Yeah, we can talk about the, the previous Rona. That'll be an obvious one just because the Rona crashed there and we kind of stumbled there. That'll pr we'll probably see this zone even on SPY as well. Uh, man, but I couldn't ignore this. We got a level right inside here that I have to pay attention to. So that's not bad. Uh, where are we at? Let's grab it from the highs because that's what I was talking about. From the highs, where are we at? That first zone, we're in crash territory. We're above 11%. Definitely crashing, right? No, no, sorry. Correction. All right, 11 to 20. So we're, we're in correction territory. Crash is above 20. So we're full-blown crashing right there. Again, another 30% drop. Uh, does that look as bad? Looks a little toppy. Looks like we're running out of momentum, right? We hit that. We sold off whatever. Came right back up. Uh, that was... Who was the whale in Japan that sold? Was that them? that back here it goes back here I don't know right now weekly downtrend as far as tech goes uh, if we were to draw that candle out in the fives here's here's the probably right in the middle we close just above neutral on that um, what's what's the retail think so already trending down when that alert goes off uh, this alert on the RSI, when that alert goes off, uh, I'm probably going to keep my eye on, on tech. Now, that's only on the weekly. It's not on RSI across the board, just weekly uh, at that point. Uh, I, I personally plan on looking at the Qs at that point. QQQ right here. Uh, you know, last but not, not least, SPY. So we talked about, are we going to pull back? I, I said last week, looks, looks like we're going short, all right? They look a little toppy. I gave you the three scenarios. Right? Small, medium, large. You're Goldilocks. You just broke into a bear's house. <laughs> Which one looks good to you? You want the medium bowl of porridge? Uh, or we could just go chopping how to keep a volatility box. Uh, if we're talking about the candles in general, this also closed at a bullish. Here's your whole range for the week. Here's the middle. Close the bulls. Kind of held that zone we were talking about. But that looks a little bit... To me, guys... That looks a little bit up there like we might just be pulling back. We're going to see something show up in the news. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to scare everybody and then sell. And everyone's going to be okay with why they're red because of the excuse in the news. My 401 is down because of this. No one likes to ask, why am I down this much in my 401? Why are my investments down this much? And they don't have a reason. They don't. No one likes to just say, well, that's just how it works. Uh, you know, maybe it's tinfoil hat theory. I've been doing this for a while, and it's worked well for me so far. It's also how we talked about this before that happened. On YouTube. Before it happened, not after. Before. Months before. I don't know. Let me say it again one more time. We melt up for... We just melt up all the time. And right here, a lot of people were talking about a crash back then too. Any one of these big red weeks come off and we start talking about a crash, the bottom is coming, here comes a flash crash. And so just so you guys know what a flash crash is, it is a flash crash, as in we were here and flash, in a blink of an eye, we are down here. We had one when algorithms just went nuts. Now they had to dial those algorithms back to make sure that doesn't happen again. So do I think flash crash? No. No. I don't think so. I don't think we even do this. I think we, we pull off somewhere in the middle. So I wanted to go over just that and point that out to you guys. Maybe check out a different time frame. See if things still align with your position. A lot of you guys right now have reopening plays. I say that with quotes. Even I have a couple plays for reopening. But what I've noticed a lot in all the chats and, and everybody talking, all the chatter, it's a BS excuse to bag hold. These guys don't have a plan. My reopening plays, they have a plan. As in, I know where I'm getting out. I know where I'd like it to go, but I gave it that time. December. That's it. So I have an entry. Stop loss. Take profit. A time it needs to do things. Now we're talking about lifting the mask ban. We're talking about reopening. The reopening plays are now. If you're in one of these reopening plays and it's a you don't really have a plan, now's the time to make that plan. You know it's already red. They're all red. So if they're going to recover and start pushing up 
find the performers. Make sure they're performing like you think they should in a reopening scenario. Because the last thing you want is, uh, I can't think of the name. There was a dot-com ticker. Let me know in the comments down below. Because I, I thought about doing a video on this uh, the other day. It was just a, a big one, and it soared, and then the dot-com crash happened. It's still not back up there. Company's still around today, still not back at those levels. The one thing you don't want to do is just hold a reopening play and lie to yourself, feel comfortable with holding that because it's a reopening play, and we've been open. You know, like, you're going to look back six months from now like, oh, wow, nothing's not open, and we're Rona's in the history books. You know, and yeah, here you are with the red position. I say that now because... Uh, market might not be so forgiving, but if you're in a 10 crap plays or a 10 reopening plays, right? Uh, I don't think they're all going to be crap. Three or four of them are probably going to shine. Take the crap ones, take that money out of there and put it in the ones that are accelerating. Your money, that whole it's not lost until you lock it in is a lie and stupid. Okay? Dumb. Get it out of your head. You have money attached to three or four letters. That's it. Every morning you make the decision to keep it in there or close that position out and put it in a different set of three letters. If the three letters on the other one are performing better and those other ones are not, cut them. Lose them. They are yesterday's news. Get in the real ones and do that. Whether they're whether you're just a perma bear and, and, and you want to grab bearish stuff, there's ETFs that go up when the market goes down for those of you that don't like to short. No matter what it is, there's something going up. Put your money in that one. I know that makes it sound very simple and easy. It's harder than that. But start wiring your brain that way. Uh, you know, start digging yourself out of a hole that you might be in. And I just go stocks are red. Last thing you want to do is hang on to them. If we're going to start repricing things, some things might not actually recover. So that was supposed to be a quick video. <laughs> I was just going to go over just the markets and bring up the weekly and talk about why that kind of looks like a red flag to me. If you're part of the notification squad and you got on this, uh, first of all, YouTube members. Uh, there's a new chart link. So if you're not a YouTube member, you click the join button next to subscribe. Uh, you have a link. You can save it as a playlist, and it's my trading view. So you can type in whatever ticker. If I have a zone drawn on it, you'll see it. Uh, so you can right-click on my things. You can make alerts in all my zones. Um, but new link out for you guys in the community tab. Also, like I was saying, if you're part of the uh, uh, notification squad and you're seeing this, I'm actually going live for the members right now, right after this. So hop on in there. I'm breaking down your ticker. And uh, everyone else, I will see you guys tomorrow, Sunday, one hour to Futures Open. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, click the bell so you get notified. Thumbs up. That's all free. And I will see you guys Sunday.